Hey guys, welcome back. Besiege Early Access Coverage. This is episode 26. I'm Enigmius, and today we're, re we're resuming our work with the perpetual drive motors. You can see here we've got a, a little demo set up after the last episode. Last episode, we were mostly focused on the wheels. Adjusting the wheels to try and make them roll a little bit better. We even had some pistons in them to uh, help give the whole thing a little bit of a push because the drive motor was having such a hard time making them go. And there was nothing wrong with that. It's the most complicated wheels I've ever made, but it was still a little bit too much work. If you were actually wanting to translate this into something that was useful in the game to destroy things in the environment, having to put so much thought into just making the thing move is kind of a pain in the butt. So we would ideally like to see something that was a little bit more autonomous. You push a button and it goes. We're pretty close to it. So I came up with this which is the same wheel design, except it doesn't have the pistons. It has uh, ballast blocks in the place of the pistons, but it's still got the steering hinges so that you can adjust them and make the wheels a little bit more round, so to speak. And instead of one perpetual drive engine, we've got two. And instead of the transmission, we have nothing. <laughs> so we, uh, we left out the transmission this time around in favor of uh, keeping things a little bit more compact so we don't have to worry about stresses bending and breaking things just to see if we would get better performance out of two of these one for each wheel as opposed to just the one that we had previously and the easiest way to find out what the answer to that question is is to start the simulation and again we can adjust the position on the wheel of these guys here and then we press the button to make them go and they will go and this time they actually decided to go in the direction of the sheep and the house and all these other things the one thing that you might notice is it started going on its own, and that's kind of the key thing. We didn't need pistons to give it a push, we didn't need pistons to continually give it pushes as it was going to keep it going around, even though we had the same wheel shape. It, with the two perpetual drive motors, it was more than capable of handling it on its own, but at the same time, it, it didn't get very far. Once it crushed the house, it kind of hit some things, and uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of power, but at least it had enough power this time around to make it go on its own. Uh, which kind of led us to the next question. Which is, what if you had four perpetual drive motors set up exactly the same as before, only we've made just enough space to insert another motor on each side. In addition, we've shored up the wheels. We've got twice as many spokes. You can see we've got smokes, spokes on the interior. I don't know. Let's do this. Here we go. Interior. And then we've got some on the outside as well. So there's twice as many spokes kind of holding the thing in place. It's less likely to have the wheel fall apart because that was kind of an issue and we switched from wood as part of the central shaft here to ballast blocks because they aren't as prone to sagging in the middle under all this weight and again the idea is the last uh, iteration that we did with just the two perpetual drive motors started moving on its own but it wasn't very fast and it didn't have a lot of torque so this time however just so that we can see how well it works we've got it turned around so that it's going to start moving away from the village uh, we'll get a little bit more mileage out of it that way literally and figuratively so we start the simulation we let everything uh, settle down and then we can adjust the corners again that would be good and then we engage all four drive motors and it's actually starting to slip a little bit. The wheels are kind of um, a little bit of extra traction would maybe not be a horrible idea, but you can see how quickly they're rolling now compared to what we had in the last episode where they were barely rolling at all uh, and frequently would just stop rolling if we didn't have the pistons to kind of give them that little push every quarter turn. Overall, I mean, it, it's pretty hard to say that this isn't working aside well except for what happens when it hits the edge of the world we, we made it a fair distance and this is as far as the game will let you go and that's why it fell apart you can see it's, it's basically pushing against the edge of the world the invisible wall it's not bad can we translate this easily into something that will be useful in uh, this map or any other 
easily, maybe not, with a little bit of work and a little bit of thought and a little bit of imagination, uh, absolutely, you could do something of that nature. But there was one more thing that I wanted to try, and that was dealing with this part in the middle, because even with the ballast blocks reducing the amount of sag that we get in the middle, it's still prone to breaking in the middle. And there was one thing that I could think of off the top of my head that might solve that issue. And here it is, the final iteration on the Perpetua drive motor. Two wheels, same format, steering hinges. We've moved the perpetual drive uh, units to the outside so that the wheels are a little bit closer. It's not all one long shaft with the wheels on the outside sagging in the middle. It's still gonna sag a little bit on the outside edges because there's still a lot of weight with all these pistons and the sliders and all that other stuff. But we don't have to worry about it breaking in the middle because of all the, the, the distance between the wheels. And just for uh, giggles, rather than putting them on the um, small wooden wheels, I put them on the large ones, just hoping that it would be a little bit more robust. And then I linked these inner large ones to the other ones by the braces going across. And this is going to be in the um, information box to download for this specific version because I think it's the most successful and the most flexible that you can mess around with and have a little bit of fun with, whether you choose to add anything with it or not. Uh, and, and the easiest thing we can do now is just uh, let it go. See, you can see it's kind of like the barbell, the old barbell syndrome, how it's got that sag to it. It's high in the middle, but it's kind of pulling down on the outer edges. So before it breaks, we're gonna adjust these guys and then we engage those guys And it's successful if it breaks anywhere um, that is not the middle, I guess you could say. Uh, and again, building up quite a decent head of speed, considering the amount of forces at play and the fact that we don't actually have, like these wheels in the middle aren't, they're steering or um, powered wheels, but we aren't using that power. We're kind of generating all of the power for these perpetual drive motors. And there we go into the edge of the world in a configuration. Um, relative to the last episode's iteration where it barely moved at all. So a success, I would say, for the perpetual drive motors and proving that you get more torque out of more units. If you're not getting enough motion out of what you got, just add more if you've got room and can manage the weight. The next episode, we're starting a completely different angle. We're going to be taking on a new project. It's going to be, again, a multi-part kind of thing. Hopefully, we'll come up with an idea, and then the episode that follows that idea will be a revision on that idea that works better until we end up with something that works. Not necessarily going to be the end-all, be-all, best machine ever to ruin the entire world, but it comes with concepts that you can use some of, all of, incorporate them in your own builds, give you some ideas, and they're a lot of fun for me to build. So I hope you're enjoying the series. I am. If you want to be notified when I add other videos, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on social media. Links for that in the information section below the video underneath the download link for this machine. Please leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.